12 days ago. Your attorneys messed up and sent me an entire digital copy of your entire cell phone with every text message you've sent for the past two years and when informed, did not take any steps to identify it as privileged or protected in any way. And as of two days ago, it fell free and clear into my possession. And that is how I know you lied to me when you said you didn't have text messages about Sandy Hook. And that right there was the exact moment when Alex Jones realized he was screwed. So that was the attorney representing the Sandy Hook families in their defamation case against Jones, providing Jones with definitive proof that he perjured himself. Now, in the event you haven't been following this trial, here's some additional context courtesy of the Daily Beast. On Tuesday, Jones insisted under oath that he had fully complied with the court's discovery process and that there were no text messages on his phone in which he discussed Sandy Hook as the other side had requested. In other words, those text messages that you insisted did not exist, they're right here. You under oath claimed that there was no other text messages. You lied and now you're busted, you committed perjury. Good job. Now to be clear, this is not a case to determine whether or not Alex Jones is culpable for defamation. That's already been determined. But this case is about uh, determining how much he's obligated to pay in damages to the families of Sandy Hook, who he did indeed defame. Now let's watch the extended clip with his reaction. As you're going to see, he was panicking. Hey Jones, you know how an iPhone works, right? You've had like one text messaging for several years now. Yeah. What does it mean if the messages are in blue? Whose I messages are those? Whose phone is this taken from? I don't know whose phone's taken from. I mean, I just, I turned the phone over and said to take the stuff off. Can I have you look in the very bottom below the very bottom left corner? Is that your phone number? Yes. So you did get my text messages, and then said you did. Nice trick. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mr. Jones. Oh. Indeed. You didn't give this text message to me. You don't. You don't know where this came from. Do you know where I got this? No. Mr. Jones, did you know that 12 days ago, 12 days ago, your attorneys messed up and sent me an entire digital copy of your entire cell phone? with every text message you've sent for the past two years, and when informed, did not take any steps to identify it as privileged or protected in any way. And as of two days ago, it fell free and clear into my possession. And that is how I know you lied to me when you said you didn't have text messages about Sandy Hook. Did you know that? I See, I told you the truth. This is your Perry Mason moment. I gave them my phone and then- Mr. Jones, you need to answer the question. No, I, did you know I, this happened? No, I didn't know this happened, but I mean, I told you, I gave him the phone over. And, just, you know. just and you, said, the question. you said, in your deposition, you searched your phone. You said you pulled down the text, did the search function for Sandy Hook. That's what you said, Mr. Jones, correct? And I had several, several different phones with this number, but I did, yeah. Well, of course, I mean, that's why you got it. No, Mr. Jones, that's not why I have it. My lawyer sent it to you, but I'm hiding it. Okay. Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones, please that? just answer questions. There's no question. Mr. Bankston also only asked questions. Sure. Mr. Jones, in discovery, you were asked, do you have Sandy Hook text messages on your phone? And you said no, correct? You said that under oath, Mr. Jones, didn't you? I mean, if I was mistaken, I was mistaken, but you, you got the messages right there. You know what perjury is, right? I just want to make sure you know before we go any further. You know what it is. Yes, I do. I mean, I'm not a tech guy. I told you I gave, in my testimony, the phone to the lawyers before or whatever, and, and so you got my phone, but we didn't give it to you. No, Mr. Jones. One more time. And please remember, if you need to assert the Fifth Amendment, you can. I need to know that you can do that. Wow. That clip is... Certainly fascinating. Now, I'm not sure what the room smelled like, but if you were in that courtroom, I'd imagine it smelled very disgusting because Alex Jones was unquestionably shitting his pants right there. No doubt. Definitely. Because you can tell for the first time, Alex Jones was realizing that he was going to be held accountable 
for his actions. And one other thing that we learned because of these text messages was how much money Alex Jones was making spreading these lies. As NBC News reporter Ben Collins explains, these texts and emails are finally revealing financials behind InfoWars. Some days in 2018, InfoWars was making $800,000 per day. Quote, well after you're deplatforming, your numbers keep getting better, Sandy Hook parents lawyer says. If they keep that up, that's about $300 million a year. Alex Jones says $800,000 dollars a day was a really good week during CPAC where they were doing better business. So to stop for a moment, $800,000 to spread lies, to defame people. How long would it take for you to make that much money working at your current job? It would take decades, but he made that in one day. Astonishing. So these texts exist and they are proof that he committed perjury, but it gets worse for Jones because as Rolling Stone reports, the January 6th committee plans to subpoena those texts in order to determine if Jones had contact with people in Trump's team regarding the January 6th insurrection. So defamation, perjury, potentially engaging in uh, sedition with the insurrection, he is in a lot of trouble. Now, I wanna share a clip of the judge scolding him where she points out that he lied on at least two, occasion, uh, two occasions. And when I say lied, committed perjury. Take a look. Mr. Jones, you may not say to this jury that you complied with discovery. That is not true. You may not say it again. You may not tell this jury that you are bankrupt. That is also not true. You may have filed for bankruptcy. I don't know that, but I've heard that. That doesn't put that doesn't make a person or a company bankrupt. You're already under oath to tell the truth. You've already violated that oath twice today in just those two examples. It seems absurd to instruct you again that you must tell the truth while you testify yet here i am you must tell the truth while you testify this is not your show you need to slow down and not take what you see as opportunities to further the message you're wanting to further and instead only answer the specific and exact question you have been asked. He is so stupid, so stupid to perjure yourself while you are under oath. I mean, you're already being held accountable for defamation. So do you want to add perjury to that as well? It seems like he does. And to make matters worse, the day before he testified today, he attacked the judge on his show, saying she's demonically possessed and part of a cult. So really smart move there by Alex Jones to attack the judge. I mean, Jesus Christ, talk about fucking shooting yourself in the foot. Now, if you want further proof that he's incapable of acting like an adult, so he was talking with Neil Heslin. This is one of the victims of the Sandy Hook massacre who he defamed. Now, I don't know how this exchange began. I think that Heslin gave him a water bottle. Um, either way, they were talking and Heslin's attorney cut that conversation off and said no. So then there was a heated verbal exchange between the attorney and Alex Jones, where the attorney tells Alex Jones to be quiet, essentially, and Alex Jones then essentially tries to instigate a physical altercation. Watch. And then he's slow. No, I'm slow. Yeah, I'll be here. Yeah. That's it. Stop talking anymore. You're not doing this. Well, I mean, that, that, that's not even a thought. That's not the way this goes. It's more shit on him. Why? Because you can't feed him fake videos anymore? No, shut up. That's what you're trying to shut my mouth. You'll never succeed. Okay. I'm autistic. I think I'm autistic too, buddy. Unbelievable. That's in a courtroom. 
That is in a courtroom. So the attorney told him, shut your mouth. And he said, why don't you make me shut my mouth? In other words, why don't you come over here and engage physically with me to make me shut my mouth? Let, let's fight. So, I mean, let's see here. We're talking about defamation, perjury. Are we going to add contempt of court as well to that list? He just is incapable of acting like an adult. He is a man child. And one other random clip that I wanted to play is him just trying to quickly shove something in his mouth. I'm not sure what this was when the judge wasn't looking. What was that? <laughs> I mean, he thinks that he was being inconspicuous there, but we saw it. There's cameras everywhere. I just, I don't understand him. Like to get into the mind of Alex Jones would be horrifying because this individual is not just delusional. He is genuinely probably psychopathic. Now, for those of you who might feel a, a little bit of um, sadness for Alex Jones, uh, the two of you in my audience that perhaps feel feel that way because, you know, he was crying there. He was upset. Um, let me remind you the pain that he caused to these families who he defamed. As the New York Times explained in an article published on November 15th of 2021, Mr. Jones for years spread bogus theories that the shooting that killed 20 first graders and six educators was part of a government-led plot to confiscate Americans' firearms and that the victims' families were actors in the scheme. People who believed those false claims accosted the families on the street and at events honoring their slain loved ones, abused them online, contacted them at their homes, and threatened their lives. The parents of Noah Posner, the youngest Sandy Hook victim, whose parents were the first to sue Mr. Jones, have moved nearly 10 times since the shooting and live in hiding. Quote, I would love to go to see my son's grave, and I don't get to do that Noah's mother, Veronique De La Rosa, said in an interview interview after the cases were filed in 2018. Each time the family moved, conspiracists published their new home address with the speed of light, she said. So before you feel sorry for Alex Jones, before you believe these grifters who try to rehabilitate Alex Jones's career for some reason, that's what he did to these families. And Neil Hostin, the man you saw Alex Jones talking to, explained how Alex Jones made his life a living hell, not to mention how insulting it was for him to claim that they were crisis actors, erasing their pain, erasing their son's existence, erasing the pain of losing their child. It's just genuinely monstrous stuff. So they're asking for $150 million, and I hope that they get every single penny. Because I don't think many people are evil enough to deserve to lose everything, but Alex Jones is without question one of those people who deserves to lose everything because of what he put these families through. But hey, at least now he admits that Sandy Hook was 100% real. So it's really nice for him to admit that after causing all of this pain and suffering of these families. So that is the... Uh, the trial with Alex Jones, and as you saw there, he's in a lot of trouble. His problems now potentially stem, you know, further, legally speaking, than just defamation. We're now talking about perjury, potential insurrection charges, and maybe contempt of court if he's incapable of handling himself in a grown-up manner while in the courtroom. Tremendous, 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 tremendous